Hi there and welcome to AP Chemistry and today Mr Audio and I are going to take you through a series of really good simple chemical reactions and you will write up some um, answers to these chemical reactions and work out the formulas and we're going to just basically talk you through them and just perform some basic experiments. So the first one that Mr Audio is going to do for us today is we've got some copper 2 carbonate in a test tube and what he's going to do is he's going to heat it using the Bunsen flame and he's going to try and funnel the gas being produced into some lime water. So he's going to just do that right now. So yeah, so I'll be teaching you the theory course which will be in B and D block. So you will see me in the next class. But what we're going to do here is uh, copper carbonate and when we heat it Okay, it will start to give off carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is heavier than air. The, the, the resultant carbon dioxide will flow over into this test tube which contains lime water. So we should start to see the reaction between the carbon dioxide. If you look closely at that, you can see it's starting to go a milky color near the top as the carbon dioxide gradually mixes with the lime water. So what you've got is lime water is calcium hydroxide and it, when carbon dioxide is added to it, it forms calcium carbonate, which is insoluble. So can you see there the way that it's starting to go cloudy? Okay, so our second experiment, you can see we've got some zinc granules in a boiling tube. And I'm going to add some 2 molar H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. Mr. Audi's going to stand to my right with a lit um, splunt and we should hopefully notice a some sort of reaction taking place. You can see it's actually fizzing. I'm going to put a little bit more acid in and put my finger at the top and we'll see if we can get some sort of result. I think most of you should be able to work out what kind of gas you've got ready. Ready and go. Okay, it made a tiny pop sound and you can actually see that it's fizzing quite nicely. So we're just gonna leave that there and move on to the next experiment. So our next experiment is going to be... Okay, so we have our next experiment where we're going to place a small amount of calcium into this boiling tube with water. I can take that off. Okay, and I'm going to use... Okay, and Mr. Audi is going to stand nearby with a um, lip slit, okay? So again, okay, we're getting a reaction of a metal, in this case with water, because it's a more it's reactive same. metal. Okay, and you can hear that we actually got a louder pop sound now. So it's a more reaction. Okay, so you can you see can that our next experiment, we've done this quite a few times, you should know what happens with this. Um, I'm going to burn some magnesium into a flame, we should get a bright light, Don't we, we're always told not to stare too intently into the light, because it's um, bad for your eyes. Um, and you should see that this is going to react with the oxygen, and we should get end up getting magnesium oxide, okay? Should be an ash type of colour. Okay, so it's a really good one to demonstrate formation reaction, so I'll put that down. Stop. Okay. Okay, so for those of you that were in my class last year, this was an experiment I did and I used this to demonstrate and explain oxidation reduction reactions. You can see I've got the iron um, nail and I'm going to pop it in. 
And what we should notice is sometimes it takes a while, might be a bit difficult for you to see that after some time that we get a build up of copper being produced on this, um, on this nail, okay? So in this particular reaction, something's obviously been oxidized and something has been reduced. Now, um, again, it's kind of hard to see on a video, but I bring it up close so you can yeah. Okay, so you can see now that if I hold this up closer, you can see the copper has been reduced on that, on that nail. Okay, you can see the nice pink tinge. Good. Okay, next. So we have now moved to the fume hood for the last two experiments and you can see that we use the fume hood for substances that um, basically produce, obviously produce something that we don't want to um, breathe in or inhale but also it's safer for us if we're working with um, highly concentrated acids. So you can see that we've got hydrochloric acid in here and we've got nitric acid and what Mr Audi is now going to do, he has a piece of metal, uh, copper metal in a boiling tube and he's going to add some nitric acid to that piece of metal. Okay. So in the, the uh, two of the other experiments, what we did was we effectively had hydrogen ions which were reacting with a metal. In one case we had uh, sulfuric acid and reacted it with zinc and the product was hydrogen. And in another one, we, we had the calcium metal reacted with water and the product was um, also hydrogen because calcium is more reactive. Now what happens if we take a, a less reactive metal? If we mix a less reactive metal like copper and added water to it, nothing will happen. But if we mix it with uh, concentrated acid, nitric acid, then what we get is a redox reaction. So the product of that is nitrogen dioxide. Now whenever we're, we're working with uh, concentrated acids, we need to do it in the fume hood. And also the product of this will be a gas called nitrogen dioxide. And nitrogen dioxide is a high highly dangerous gas. Now you will actually do an experiment with this later in the year but you can see the brown gas being given off. Now that brass, get brown gas is nitrogen dioxide. If you were to inhale that it would immediately turn into nitric acid in your lungs and dissolve your lungs which is why we're in the fume cupboard. And you can see that at the bottom, the bluish colour, that's because the reactive copper is now going into copper nitrate and producing that bluish colour. So that's that particular reaction. Uh, and our final one is going to be so, Okay, so our final experiment, if you look inside the fume hood, we have a um, broken burette, which is perfect to demonstrate um, Graham's law of diffusion. And what Mr. Audi and I are going to do is we're going to um, soak this cotton wool in concentrated ammonia on one side absolutely saturated and then Mr. Audi is doing the hydrochloric acid on the other side and what we're going to do is we're going to lift the cotton wool. Let's try bringing them close together up, up above first and see what happens when the two come and close to each other. We're going to put them together and you can actually see that a white smoke's been produced. So obviously some, there's a chemical reaction going on and that white smoke is actually ammonium chloride. Now the interesting thing about this experiment is that these two gases diffuse at a different rate. Can you work out which one's going to diffuse faster than the other? Well, the way that we can actually um, measure it is we can actually see where our white um, particular cloud has been produced along the burette and the gas with the highest molar mass is actually going to move the slowest while the gas with the least molar mass is going to move the fastest. So that white fog that we should see hopefully um, being formed shortly might be a bit difficult to see. Like I said before it is ammonium chloride.
so what you can see is the white the white cloud forming here much closer to the HCL end. This is because if you look at the molecular mass of HCL, it's twice the molecular mass of ammonia. So therefore, because it's twice the molecular mass, it diffuses at half the speed. So there is an inverse relationship between the molecular mass and the rate of diffusion, which you'll cover in gas laws. Okay, so please make sure that you um, follow the instructions in your lab sheet and you fill in the boxes and ask or uh, complete what's required of you. Yeah, because what, what you need to do is not only write down what you see, which is the observations, so you need to write those down and then write a word description of the reaction, but then using symbols, write a symbolic uh, balanced equation so that you make sure that you've learned those different levels for the different reactions. These are all very, very important reactions, ones that come up quite frequently in AP.